what does this mean about the book? Is the book not canon anymore? Here they go again, retconning books. Oh, Dave. You know, like, it's all <laughs> Dave's fault somehow. And I was like, ah, slow down. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Star Wars Explained Weekly q and I'm Alex. I'm Molly. And we're going to talk a lot about the Bad Batch today. That's going to be the main topic, basically the only topic and what I took questions for. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, let's play a little catch up. What did we get up to this past week? What did we do this past <laughs> week? I mean, the Bad Batch news kind of took over our week. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there were still some fun Star Wars things that we got into. Uh, I mean, this isn't strictly Star Wars, but Sunday we went to the Story of the Year concert uh, because we know Adam, their Sunday? bassist. Saturday. Saturday? I think it was Sunday. Mm-mm. It was Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because you Saturday. were hungover on Sunday. That's right. You're <laughs> you are correct. I didn't, I didn't even. I'm just getting old. I just had a few beers okay, and then I had Poopa. a headache in the morning. It's okay. That's not fair. I made you're you right. My, I made I, you my fancy eggs. I just erased Sunday from my memory. <laughs> uh, but Saturday we went to the Story of the Year concert. We got to hang out with Adam, uh, who is on the Thank the Maker podcast. Uh, which was great. That was a lot of fun catching up with him. Also, I think it's funny that... Did we go to any concerts last year? We went to a Motion City soundtrack concert last year, Mm -hmm. and I think that was it. And then this year, already in January, we saw Motion City soundtrack again. We went to Mosh Eisley last year. That's true. Uh, In San Diego. We got to do that at San Diego. Um, But as far as live performances, Mm -hmm. uh, this year we've already seen Motion City Soundtrack and we got to hang out with Tony, which was lovely. And now we've been to Story of the Year. We've already been to two concerts. That makes it seem like we only go to live shows for people that we know and can hang out with afterwards, which is not true. I, but I it like helps. hanging out with people. But yeah, <laughs> I would like to go to more live music this year. Just we got to general. check out the, the new Masquerade, which if you're from atlanta or you know atlanta the masquerade is different now much different (laughs) (laughs) yeah they've changed it but i think that was years ago uh but we we did that uh let's see i finished defy the storm uh the high republic book that review is going to come out shortly Mm -hmm. uh let's see what else did we do I, we just talked about this earlier, and now I can't think of anything we mentioned. We, we didn't get up to that much. Uh, I, uh, big thing for the channel, I finished our first uh, FAQ video. So we're, we're going to be doing this series throughout the year and beyond, probably, uh, of like frequently asked questions for every movie. And I picked out 40 from A New Hope that over the past 10 years of doing this channel, it's like, okay, I've seen these questions pop up over and over and over again. Hmm. So it's a nice like half hour long video just answering questions about a new hope uh i'm working on empire strikes back now but that one probably won't come out until after the bad batch because now now we have some news about the bad batch it's starting on february 21st yes uh and so now i'm kind of making room to just cover the show while it's on and they were nice enough to give us all the dates Yes. For all the episodes and the episode titles. I feel spoiled. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, we can actually plan the coverage of this show. And I'm pretty psyched about it. It is really nice as a, a person who's going to be really diving deep into every episode to know, hey, here are the dates. Here are the episodes that are going to like double up mm-hmm. uh, on weeks. That's great. It's going to go all the way to May. Uh Right up to May 4th, which is cool. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised they didn't save the finale for May 4th, but now I'm like, hmm, maybe they have mm-hmm. something else planned. Yeah, and we can we can go ahead and start planning after show things and guests and all that stuff. Yeah, as far as our coverage goes, it'll be like normal. We're going to do a review for the episode uh, probably on that Wednesday, and then that evening we will have a guest on and we'll do a live stream, and we'll discuss it. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into that. It feels like Ahsoka was forever ago. It does. (laughs) It wasn't really. Maybe because we took some time off in, like, December and January, like, early January, and after actually taking some time off to rest, it feels like it's been a long time. Yeah. But we're going to talk about the Bad Batch, took some questions about it, but 
uh, I did a breakdown of the trailer. Uh, we did a little impromptu reaction to it just because uh, I, I was working out and then Molly came out and said, hey, Bad Batch trailer just dropped. And I was like, oh, and then I watched it and then ran back inside and I was like, Molly, have you watched this yet? <laughs> Because <laughs> I hadn't, I was just like, oh, great. We got a date. We got a trailer. Awesome. Uh, and I just assumed it was the trailer that we had already seen from Celebration, which it was not. So I saw the big reveal at the end and just like rushed in. I, I assumed you hadn't seen it. So I was like, let's watch it together right now. And you were like, well, we might as well record it. So mm -hmm. uh, that's up for uh, our Patreon if you want to watch it. It was just like a quick reaction, but... It, it got a fun little shocked, slightly teary-eyed face out of me because I was just like, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk about Asajj. We'll save that because that's what most of the questions are about. Uh, but just what was your immediate reaction to the trailer? I'm psyched. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to talk about Bad Batch again. I loved where the show went in season two. I think it's like one of the best Star Wars stories. Like it's up there with Rebels for me, just as far as the storytelling and the heart of the show really connecting with me. So the trailer looked awesome and it, it, it was like still just a lot of like quick moments. So it's hard to like pinpoint exactly the direction of this season, but they have a lot to wrap up for the clones. And Ventress being there was just like an incredible bonus and then just like shot my mind into question mode. Like, wait, how is she there? What's I said going we're going to save that talk for the <laughs> end and you immediately dive <laughs> right into it. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that yet. But I was also like, where's tech? <laughs> well, a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about tech. Uh, Pippin's and before up on you the jump desk. all over me Pippin's about it. Pippin's on the desk ready to throw things off of it. So <laughs> there he goes. I will not be disappointed if tech is actually gone forever dead i won't be disappointed i am just the kind of person that will hold out hope that maybe somehow he survived and also like there's a good chance his survival is not going to be happy like he could be zombified tech basically that doesn't remember anything from his previous life and they're going to use him to like get to the bad batch which would be awful but it's possible with Hemlock in charge. That's I, I was watching uh, Force Center's great discussion about the trailer and Joseph Scrimshot. Leave it to him to think of something brilliant and heartbreaking that they could clone tech and he could be back, but not really. And it's like this exploration of, you know, it's tech, but it isn't. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Joseph specifically said, could you imagine Wrecker trying to wrap his head around like, that's my brother, but all of the experiences that made him who he is are gone. Yeah. So it's still not him. And like that is a very clone story for Star Wars because that was the whole point is that all of these people are identical. They were made by the exact same genetic material, but depending on who they got partnered with as a Jedi who led them in battle they're going to become different people. Mm -hmm. Like episode yeah. one of the show is Yoda saying like, yeah, you all look the same, but you're all unique in the force. Mm -hmm. and, and like, so <laughs> the idea of tech being a clone, but not being tech is really rough. It would be the brain of tech, the body of tech, but the not the heart and soul exactly. of tech. Like that is what is unique about the clones so yeah i mean that would be tragic but that's the kind of tragic stuff that i like to see and stuff so if if it were that i'd still be into it it'd be sad <laughs> yeah. but it'd be good i also just thought that the trailer was great i think the show continues to look amazing they're they're just like moments that kind of make you go wow and one of them is the the turbo tank just shooting missiles out like that's just such a cool moment yeah uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Palpatine looks as creepy as ever. I'm never going to be tired of Ian McDermott returning for Palpatine. I still love Hemlock. He didn't get a ton of screen time in season two, but immediately I was like, 
this is a great villain. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he's wonderful. Crosshair, if you really look at the trailer hard, not even that hard. It was just that there was a shot and it was like Hunter and it's someone in Crosshair's armor, at least behind him. But my brain was just on autopilot. I was like, there's Hunter and Wrecker. And then like on my third watch, I was like, that's not Wrecker's helmet. Mm. Uh, So I do think we're going to see Crosshair fighting alongside his brothers again. Love that. I I am ready for a redemption story where he doesn't die. Yeah. (laughs) At least not immediately. That'll be interesting, though, because does that mean... Because Crosshair knows Omega is there at at Mount Tantus, right? Like, there's that shot of them kind of, like, passing each other. So would Crosshair leave Omega there? Mm. My tinfoil hat theory at this moment is that there's a shot of Omega piloting a ship. And I'm just throwing it out there that she and Crosshair attempt to escape together. And Omega knows that, like, there's not going to be a punishment for her if she stays behind or something. Like, she's too special Mm. for Hemlock. So she might do something that means she doesn't get away, but Crosshair does. And that could be his Grinch moment. Where like his now he's he, his heart grows three sizes. <laughs> now he fully loves Omega. I mean, he already in season two sacrificed a lot to just get a message to the Bad Batch and say they're coming for Omega. Mm-hmm. So he already has some feelings for his brothers and for her. Uh, but I think it would be really interesting if Crosshair got out. He found his brothers and he's like, "We gotta go get her." Like. That'd be yeah. that'd be great. Omega's like, this is my last time trying to get to you as a friend. So if nothing else, just do this for me. Yeah, it's a very like Tom Hanks in uh, Saving Private Ryan, like earn this crosshair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be yeah. good now. Be better. That just reminded me. We're not going to Ventress talk just yet, but there is a quote. Um, I think from Dark Disciple. I was just reading Asajj's Wikipedia page today and it says remember you always have a choice to be better you always have a choice to pick the right path even if that choice comes a little late which that is like the heart of star wars Uh, one of the main themes of like hey it's never too late to just choose to be better today Mm -hmm. crosshair or asajj or vader or kylo ren whoever uh and then hopefully you don't die right at the end (laughs) (laughs) yeah Hopefully you don't do one good thing and then die. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of everything. There, there's going to be a bunch at Mount Tantus, which I'm excited to finally get inside and spend some significant time there. Uh, but really, it, it just filled me with excitement. Yeah, it was almost a completely different trailer from what I recall it. Celebration. Very different. I, I think Celebration, I, I actually went and watched our breakdown, like which was just us trying to remember what we saw. We said there were a lot of monsters in it, mm-hmm. which we did see uh, again, like that crocodile thing. That was cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, I guess Wolf, I'm, I'm really excited to finally have Wolf in this story and see how he goes from Empire to uh, Rex and Gregor's crew mm-hmm. in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, Yeah, we got a couple more lines from Rex mm -hmm. in the trailer. Excited to see what he's got planned in his, like, underground clone business. Uh, I I think the last thing I want to do before we dive into the the big main topic is read through the episode titles and just, if any of them pop out to you, we can talk about them. But starting with episode one, it is Confined, Paths Unknown, Shadows of Tantis, A Different Approach, The Return, Infiltration, Extraction, Bad Territory, The Harbinger, Identity Crisis, Point of No Return, Juggernaut, Into the Breach, Flash Strike, and The Cavalry Has Arrived. I love the the title of the last one. Yeah. Because it's the the first line that the Bad Batch had in Clone Wars. Yeah. Is that it? In Season 7. It was Wrecker's first line. Yeah. Uh, that also kind of scares me just after plan 99, the title for the last episode of season two. And I remember having such optimistic ideas of what that would mean, that it would be more about 
getting Crosshair back, and mm. the Plan 99 is something that Clone Force 99 all does together, and instead, Plan 99 is one of us has to sacrifice ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now I'm... I'm scared for what the cavalry has arrived, like if it's going to have some tragic meaning. Instead. In my mind, that's going to mean like the cavalry, the cavalry has arrived as in like the clones are coming together to work together to like save themselves. And maybe maybe it's got something to do with Pabu and they're going to like save Pabu from oh. being destroyed. Oh, that's something that I wanted to talk about is just Pabu because... I did not catch that in my breakdown. And then Molly comes in and ruins my day because <laughs> she's got it up on her phone and she's like, Is this Pabu? Does this look like Pabu to you? And I was like, <laughs> No. It, you showed me the shot of that special clone mm-hmm. in front of like the tree on the plaza. And I was like, mm-hmm. it, No. And then mm-hmm. I started looking at other shots of the Empire like landing and taking over places. And I'm like, that design on the ground is the exact same design as the plaza on Pabu. I just so. I was glad that I was right about something for once, but I just sent back the the smiling emoji with the tear. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I, I I just went, No. <laughs> that that's the one place. The one place we had. Uh but back to the titles. Shadows of Tantis is obviously very intriguing. I'm glad it's episode three, so we're gonna get it right away mm-hmm. i In- mean yeah i'm excited to see and know a little bit more about tantus infiltration and extraction that makes me hope that kind of it, it, that's a, a two-parter on march 13th that maybe that will be the tantus rescue mm-hmm. i, I kind of hope that omega and crosshair aren't stuck there forever yeah so or for the whole season so it they get in they get out and nothing bad happens. <laughs> That's it. The Harbinger. I don't know <laughs> why, but that one makes me think it could be Ventress's episode. Same. The Return also could be that, but I don't, the Harbinger just sounds... Or it could be about that mystery clone. Yeah. CX-1, I think they called it in yeah. the subtitles. Could but be. It, it's very ominous. Um, Back to Cavalry. It would be kind of fun if they flipped it on its head, where in season seven, Wrecker says it because he's like, we're here to save the day. Mm -hmm. Like, we're the Bad Batch. We're amazing. You regs are beneath us, even though the regs also think they're weird. But like the idea that there's a divide between the Bad Batch and the regs. But maybe this time, the cavalry arriving could be all the regs, and Mm -hmm. they're coming to help the Bad Batch. Yeah. Or just like regular people helping the clones. Yeah, I like that too. Like they need help from their friends. And like... The cavalry has arrived and it's Senator it's Chuchi. All- <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just loaded up with blasters. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> like like the, I could just see like an uprising of the people of Pabu. And like mm. an uprising of just people in general. And like Chuchi and... Bounty hunters just, like, getting on the side of the clones to, like, help them. Mm, Yeah, because we have Finnick in the trailer. We've got Cad Bane. I don't see him being helpful at all. (laughs) But he's, well, I I don't know why he's there. (laughs) But I'm sure the bounty hunters are involved somehow. I think that this is going to be kind of like Avatar The Last Airbender. Season (laughs) 3 does a really good job at pulling the whole cast that we've met over all three seasons Mm -hmm. and characters return. We get some closure on all of them. I I could see Bad Batch having a similar end where Finnick Shand is here to help and Cad Bane is here to hinder. (laughs) And like Finnick could be the one of the ones to help them get into Mount Tantus and pull Omega out because they had kind of a bonding moment. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into the the big main talk of uh, this week, and that would be Asajj Ventress. Uh, the internet blew up uh, when that happened, and I, l- let's just talk about our own feelings for it first, uh, because I, I think that I do want to focus on my excitement first and foremost. I definitely... When I saw it, I heard her voice and I like perked up and then I saw her and I screamed and ran inside. So 
my gut reaction to this was pure like oh my god she's back and then it definitely came shortly after with like oh wait a minute hold on it, it kind of reminded me of hearing palpatine's cackle in the rise of skywalker trailer i was like <gasps> wait wait uh, <laughs> what does this mean but i think it's important to realize that there is excitement for this first and foremost yeah for sure uh i mean if you watched our reaction, you can see my actual first reaction. And it was just like complete shock and excitement. And then it it did take me a while, but I also was kind of like, okay, so what's the timeline here? Why is she here? Did she actually die? And like all those questions came later. But I, my first reaction was like, holy crap, <laughs> it's happening. Real quick before we move on, we've got a word from this video's sponsor. So we'll be right back. It's the start of a new year, and Molly and I have been working out more and eating healthier. If you're in the same boat, Factor can help you out. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the time and stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. You don't have to worry about trips to the grocery store, prep work, or cooking fatigue. Instead, Factor gives you chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from each week, including options like keto, calorie-smart, vegan, vegetarian, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. With our hectic schedule, even making a good lunch is difficult for me. Factor's two-minute meals let you fuel up with restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door. Factor also offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, and more to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. Factor is less expensive than takeout and even offers a gourmet plus option if you need a more upscale meal for a special occasion. Head to factormeals.com slash starwars50 and use code starwars50 to get 50% off. That's code starwars50 at factormeals.com slash starwars50 to get 50% off. Our first question is coming from just about everyone, but uh, they want to know how this is going to fit with Dark Disciple and whether or not the book is canon anymore uh, since you brought it up. And I, I think people probably know by now, but... StarWars.com had some official statements about it. Uh, the supervising director and executive producer Brad Rao makes it clear that her return will honor prior tales, including the book in which the character apparently perished. We don't want to spoil anything, but want fans to know that any new storytelling with Ventress will align with the events of Dark Disciple. So, to me, I'm, that's all I needed to hear. I appreciate that they put that out for nerds like us. They mm. knew <laughs> that people were going to, a, a subset of fans were going to be having these questions. And like, that's all I want to know. The like, book they, fans were rabid yeah. that day. Like just that short amount of time between the the drop of the trailer and then as people started to see that announcement, like, that it wasn't going to be messing with this book. Like that amount of time in between, I can't tell you how many comments we got on like our tweets and stuff that were just like, what does this mean about the book? Is the book not canon anymore? Here they go again, retconning books. Oh, Dave, you know, like it's all <laughs> Dave's fault somehow. And I was like, ah, slow down. <laughs> and like, first let's remember that I mean, I'm sure Dave Filoni has input on this show. He was the series creator but he's not the showrunner. He, I don't think he's written a single episode. Uh, Jennifer Corbett is the head writer. Uh, I believe Brad Rao is the uh, showrunner. So, like, it, this is not... Everyone was yelling at Dave Filoni and... Dave hates books. <laughs> he loves retconning books and, and comics. And like, like, we should point out that the very first episode of The Bad Batch did some stuff with the Kanan comic. That just, you know, so changed two, the events yeah. a little bit, added the Bad Batch into that story. So I, I know why people have that reaction. I also was already in my mind thinking like, mm, I don't know how this works until I saw that comment where I'm like, if they do just ignore the book, like my kind of go to is that, you know, if you take a step back, the large broad strokes still work i i think that's true with the bad batch and the canaan comic you just need to kind of mesh them together right but if a character dies in one story and then just is like no never mind in another i'm like that doesn't really work but them saying that we know we know that she died in the book yeah so okay so our 
big three options, I guess, are flashback, clone. It is a and, series about cloning. And she has resurrected. Night which sister magic. Would not be, you know, yeah, out of the bounds of, of Night Sister shenanigans. So which of those three do you think it is? Night Sister Magic. I mean Same. The, Marin is there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Where? Marin is on Dathomir. She's like one of the only Oh, at this wait. Yeah. She's on Dathomir until five years after she's just lonely yeah (laughs) she's like ventress wake up and but like i kind (laughs) of it would be thrilling to see marin on screen like that uh but then ventress would leave (laughs) and then marin would still be lonely so i'm like okay i i kind of don't want that to happen but uh yeah i think that just makes sense i don't think it's a flashback because something else on starwars.com was updated uh her data bank it says Ventress sacrificed herself to save Quinlan's life, taking the brunt of Dooku's Force Lightning during their final confrontation, but that wasn't the end of Asaja's story. So that, to me, suggests that the story is, is continuing. Going from that point on. And not that... It, it's certainly possible we could jump backwards, but I think this is... She has been resurrected by Night Sister Magic or something. Mm-hmm. She's back. I mean, yeah, I don't want to spoil the book too much, but I may- mean. <laughs> maybe, well, it's too late now. But in the book, there's a there's talk of like some green mist coming out. Like mm-hmm. she is put to rest several months after she's killed on Dathomir in like one of the the black pools or whatever mm-hmm. on Dathomir. And, you know, it, it talks about in the book that there's like a little green mist and you can like hear some whispers and some spooky stuff is going on. So I think that is plenty of proof to be able to say like something could happen. There's always like we don't understand so much about Night Sister lore. I wish we could get more information about it and like I would love just a cool backstory of like how all that stuff got started. But anyways, it's just so mysterious. We don't really know how it can work. So I think there's plenty of room for her to be able to come back either on her own or someone else like Marin is there to do it. I I don't know. Or maybe Quinlan comes yeah. back and is like, no, nah, I'm not done with you. <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk about Quinlan. And I also want to point out that this book was adapted from stories that were developed by Dave and George Lucas, I believe Katie Lucas wrote these scripts Mm -hmm. uh, that then Christy Golden adapted. So that's also something that I don't think Dave would go and just retcon something that two Lucases worked on. Yeah. Um, And I also want to point out, uh, I did a short on this earlier this week, but in Star Wars Resistance, there was a character and it and that development of that character it was thrown around that it could be Asajj Ventress. And that was Dave Filoni's suggestion. So he, he ultimately decided not to go that direction. But I think that this is an idea that she could have more story that has been going on for at least five years. This isn't something they did flippantly. Uh, this isn't something that they they did without thought of what came before. Mm-hmm. I... I Right now, based on that quote, I'm like, I have faith that this is all going to line up, but I am preparing myself for the idea that in the show, it might not be overly explained. Like, Mm. I I think there's probably going to be a line or two, but I don't think they're going to really dive into how she survived and how she's back because, you know, not everyone has read this book, so they don't want to stop the show dead in its tracks Sure. To explain what happened. But I do think they're going to acknowledge it. What a perfect way for them to do uh, an episode of Tales of the Jedi with her and and Quinlan Voss. Oh, yeah. Let's get the explanation there. And, and my hope is that Quinlan will be with her because mm. he is also a survivor. He is mentioned in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. He is working with the Hidden Path. She could be working with the hidden path alongside him. Mm -hmm. 
that'd be that'd be dope. Okay, we have inadvertently answered uh, a few of the questions that our patrons sent in, like how we think Asajj will be brought back. Uh, but Caleb Diaz asks, why bring the character back in the first place? Like, what kind of story do we think we're going to see with her? Mm. I'll say, I- I've kind of brought it up a couple times, but... I'm really excited to see Asajj's continued redemption story. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was just another one of those characters that did something, came back to the light, joined the good side right at the end of her life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to see you as a good person. And the little taste that we've already gotten of her, I'm like, yeah, this is what I want. Where yeah. she's like, I'm, I'm not a dark side user anymore. Like, I... I'm on the light side. I don't want to kill you, but you're really annoying me. And I, I kind of want, I'm fighting the impulse to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw so much of her throughout the Clone Wars and in the Clone Wars movie. I think it's fair to say that she deserves an on screen like version of her to show how much she's overcome and have it be with the clones. Hmm. Have her. Doing, her former enemies. Yeah, have her doing something to make up for that a little bit and to show that she's changed, she wants to do good by them now. Uh, and I think we saw Teth. Oh, right, yeah. In the trailer. Yeah, we did. Which is would be from the Clone Wars movie, and that would be cool to see her on Teth again. That was kind of the first place we interacted with her, at least in this Clone Wars series, not the... Tartakovsky one right. but yeah it would be cool to go back to like where it all started for her mm-hmm. and us as the audience um I also do think that this is a chance like the Bad Batch has been used a handful of times to revisit ideas from the Clone Wars that just didn't see the light of day so I think this is kind of that chance for maybe some elements of Dark Disciple to come in. Obviously, they're not going to go try to assassinate Dooku. But just to give that character some on-screen closure, like you said, Mm. for people who didn't even know this book existed, I do think that there is value in that. And like I said, I trust that they have found a way to be like, if you read the book, we're still honoring that too. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to try to find a way to balance both. There could also be a connection with her and Senator Chuchi somehow, because I know they're on Pantora in this book. Yeah, I think it's been, I haven't read it since it came out. I might have to do a reread real fast. It was just like on her Wikipedia article when I was reading the summary of this. And I was like, oh, Pantora, Chuchi's there. They might know each other. She has connections with all the bounty hunters. She could tell Omega about Boba Fett. Like, that would be an interesting conversation. Yeah, that's true, because she's worked with Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, the her Clone Wars episodes, especially when she's forging her own identity as a bounty hunter, and, like, she joins Boba Fett's team for an episode, and then... Which is uh, a great episode. A great episode where she then turns around and does the right thing mm-hmm. uh, and helps that girl... Uh, and, and imprisons Boba Fett instead of taking the bounty. Like, yeah, great stuff. So, yeah, I'm just excited to see her good but not all the way good side. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer where he's like, I'm fighting alongside you, but I still kind of hate you, but mm-hmm. I uh, I won't kill you. <laughs> yeah, it's the same kind of, like, demon with a soul mm-hmm. type of idea. But I, I think that the chance to get to see her continued journey uh, is is worth it. It's like, very, I mean, yeah, it's very Star Wars to be able to see someone's redemption and what they're, do- like, it's nice for a chance to get to see what they're doing to redeem themselves. That's, that's I would argue that it's not very Star Wars to get this well, chance, but, sure. I'm, but I'm excited for it. <laughs> the fact but- that they got redeemed at all is the Star Wars part. Yes. And then being able to see the, anything after that is just bonus well yeah i I think i've talked before about how like i wanted to see kylo ren be redeemed and then atone like what does it look like when you've done terrible things for the dark side like asajj has Mm -hmm. uh you become a better person and now she is being brought back and has a chance to 
actually atone for what she did. And I, I think that's a good lead into uh, the next question from, from Elo Asti, who asks if we think there's a chance for live action Asajj now. Mm. And if we're talking about if she is still with Quinlan Voss, or if she's not, but I could still see her being involved in the hidden path. Mm -hmm. Like, she had a rough childhood. She was given away to a pirate, and then he died. And then she was rescued by a Jedi, and he died. And, like, every mentor or parental figure that she has ever had has died. And so I could really see her kind of like she helps that cage girl in that Boba Fett episode. She might want to help these other kids who are force sensitive and get them to safety. Sure. I don't know. Like, I don't want to jump too far ahead and, you know, get my hopes up for her to be in like Ahsoka or, you know, anything live action, really. I'm I'm just happy we're getting more of her at all. But the fact that she, if she is in fact resurrected and alive again and doesn't, let's assume she doesn't die in right. Bad Batch Season <laughs> right. 3. That would be horrid. Yeah, don't do that to us. No, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's assume she lives on after that. Of course, everyone's next questions are, okay, what's next for her? So there's room for it, but I don't want to get too ahead of everything. Yeah, I mean, agreed. It's very, if you give a Star Wars fan a cookie, they're going to want a glass of milk. Like the, yeah. we, we can't help but continue to jump ahead. I For right now, present day me is like, I don't think we'll see her in live action. Like, I don't know that there's enough room for her for something like Ahsoka, but there is a lot of Night Sister stuff going on and there's Dathomir. So like the potential is there, but I don't want to get my hopes up. I think I'm going to go like 55% we'll see her in live action right now. I guess they did name drop her <laughs> in the first season. But anyway, I don't know. Name drop in Ahsoka. She comes back in Bad Batch. And then in some future story, I could see it happening. I'd, I'd love it, but I don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> well, I think uh, that that's everything I had written down. Is there anything else you want to talk about Asajj or the Bad Batch before we wrap up? I don't think so. Okay. I think we covered just about everything. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to talking about it again. Yeah, I might I might try to read through this again. Uh, I think that would be a good idea. It's a quick read. Yeah. And I I love uh, Christy Golden has been on Twitter, thanking everyone because like the book sales of this <laughs> have gone way up. And, That's great. You know, like it is very good. Yeah, it's I'll... a lot of people's favorite star wars book i'll i'll throw out that this was i think the first canon book that really grabbed me and i was like this is great mm. uh so it, it's very much worth the read if you're a clone wars or bad batch fan and christy golden uh, writes oh. tons of books not just star wars yeah. stuff but lots of other like sci-fi fantasy stuff uh christy golden is also the author that named tk troopers after our birthdays so uh, a little biased, I guess. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, if you haven't read it and you want to listen to it, you can get it on audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. Free trial gets you a free credit, blah, blah, blah. Go go get your... <laughs> I don't know the whole spiel. <laughs> I just decided to throw it in there. But Audible's great. The audiobooks are fantastic. Give it a, give it a read or listen or both. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we, were, we will be covering the Bad Batch extensively starting on February 21st all the way through May 1st, right? And as far as we know, it's not coinciding with any other shows, which I'm so glad about because when it was on at the same time as Mandalorian, it, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot for for all of us. I, and Bad Batch deserves that attention. Like, yeah. there are definitely still people who don't want to watch animated star wars for whatever reason i get it because i used to be one of those people but the bad batch is really really great we, we will not ever stop trying to convince those people to give it another shot yeah i'm never gonna judge <laughs> someone for being like ah star wars cartoon i don't think so because like i know where you're coming from but the bad batch is so good it's been so solid all the way through i'll, I'll be sad to see it go but like i'm i'm glad it just has this mm -hmm 
concise story that's well told. Yeah. I think uh, Force Center brought it up on their live stream yesterday, but there's a whole generation of fans that grew up watching the Clone Wars and this generation that are so, so attached to the clones and those stories, like they're thriving with the Bad Batch. Yeah. It, it's and that's true. important. And, and that was a great point by Force Center is that, you know, we think of Star Wars as original trilogy, prequel trilogy, and then you jump to sequel trilogy. But like, yeah, there were people who grew up just like, no, the Clone Wars is mm -hmm. what got me into Star Wars. So, yeah, yeah the, this is really great for that generation. I guess it was the generation after us because I would probably say we were in the prequel generation. Mm hmm kind of in between original and prequels, but that's a huge time gap, so uh, closer to prequels. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us for today. If you want to leave a question for next week's Q&A, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Blue Sky, and Threads. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.